Welcome to Walking Through Acts for the last time. Uh, this is the final episode, I believe it's number 43, of the series of YouTube videos called Walking Through Acts, the book of Acts in the Bible. And the place I'll go ahead and quickly mention before saying a few other things, uh, chapter 28, verse 11. That's where we will resume the reading there for the final time here in just a moment. Chapter 28, verse 11. And uh, since I have just said it's the final time, let me use this occasion, since it will be the last, to say thank you for those who have tuned in and watched either all or some of the videos. Um, I'm not searching for compliments or comments, but I have received some, and I appreciate that. Um, it's been good for me. I know you may think, uh, how can that be? You've taught this so many times or read it so many times. How could it be good for you? Well, it just is. I, I don't, I'm not trying to explain how that is. I just know it's true. It's been very good for me. Um, it seems to be always the case when I do Bible studies like this, either video or just in person, one-on-one -on -one or whatever, going through Acts or the Book of Mark, which is a series, by the way, in case you're relatively new to this and don't know, there's a series prior to this called Walking Through Mark, um, and that might be of interest to you if you are uh, un unaware of that. that. That's on our YouTube channel as well. And one more thing, uh, well actually two, but one thing about the, the, the conclusion of this, and then I want to do a little setup for the reading. Uh, uh, will Some may be wondering, are you going to do more uh, of another book of the Bible? I may. Um, I'm leaning. <laughs> Don't know that that answers it, but it just says that I'm positive about the possibility. Will it be immediate? No, it will not be. Um, uh, will it be the plan, in other words, just a few days from now to start a new series walking through a particular book of the Bible? Um, that's not planned. In fact, it, <laughs> uh, I don't even have in mind for sure whether I'll do it. I'm just saying I'm leaning, and I don't have in mind, here's what I'm going to do if I do. And so there's um, uh, a pause, if you will. If I do do it, uh, um, it, it will hopefully not be too long. And uh, uh, but I'm just saying it will not be uh, it will not be immediate. Okay, chapter 28, uh, a short setup. Paul the apostle, whom we left off last time, was uh, just on uh, had just been involved in a shipwreck with lots of other people too. Luke, for sure, is the writer of the book of Acts. He's on board. There may be others. Uh, 276, he says, were the people on the ship that wrecked on the coast of uh, uh, the little island known as Malta or Melita. Uh, just off the uh, tip of um, Italy, and uh, he had, uh, I don't know about all the other prisoners, but he was on his way there in an appeal to Caesar. Um, he, the, the right, if you want to call it that, to appeal to the Supreme Court was a citizenship right, and he was a Roman citizen, so he had that right. Not everybody had that, but he did, and he exercised it. Um, okay, I, I don't think I'll say much more. Some of more what I could say might come out in the first part of the reading, so let's just get right to it. I want to make sure we conclude this today. Chapter 28, 11. After three months, let me just stop already. After three months on the Isle of Malta. After three months, we sailed in the Alexandrian ship whose figurehead was the twin brothers, which had wintered at the island. And landing at Syracuse, we stayed three days. From there, we circled round and reached Regium. And after one day the south wind blew, and the next day we came to Puteoli, where we, where we found brethren, and were invited to stay with them seven days. And so we went toward Rome. And from there, when the brethren heard about us, they came to meet us as far as Apiforum and three inns. When Paul saw them, he thanked God and took courage. Let me just stop there to say that um, uh, uh, the uh, Apiforum, or Appian Way, that road from the south part of Rome heading towards the city of Rome. Uh, I was uh, blessed. I was uh, fortunate to see with my own eyes as a kid. I, I don't mean a small kid. Uh, I wasn't a teenager yet, but I was getting on up in age enough that I can recall. I can still imagine it in my mind. Um, I think I was 10 or 11 maybe. I forget exactly. And my dad was there, my mother, and I, at the time I had two sisters. Later, there were two other siblings, but at that time, it was the three kids. Um, and uh, I remember that. And I don't recall exactly what my dad said, but he probably said something about this is the road that 
Maybe the actual uh, stones are still there in the road, which Paul and others may have walked on as they were heading towards Rome. And so, uh, I don't know, a little bit of personal uh, fascination with it, you might say. And uh, uh, the, the uh, oh, I need to go all the way back to the beginning. Uh, it mentions that there was an Alexandria, that's from Egypt, an Alexandrian ship that had been wintering there. Seems to be, I don't know a lot about maritime uh, practices of the first century, but ships would stay in a port for a while, even if it was not their ultimate destination, if the if the weather of the winter that is uh, was adverse and uh, having wintered there for three months they were now moving on and uh, for whatever reason they had room for the prisoners and people from the shipwreck ship that Paul was on and they moved on up uh, to the to the country the nation the land of uh, Italy and there's places mentioned by Luke who's writing this. Uh, we stopped here, we stopped here, and the last thing I'll say before resuming the reading is that it was a, a real, it was real, he was thankful to God and very encouraged when he saw brethren. Okay, this is verse uh, 16. Now when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Paul was permitted to dwell by himself with the soldier who guarded him. Uh, if this is the same centurion, he's been favorable towards Paul more than once. And uh, uh, you can read between the lines as to what all was involved in that, but nonetheless, it's uh, God's providence, I would hope, and, and his what a blessing. And he was still in prison, you might say, but had liberties, well, not liberties to leave, but flexibility, you might say, that some might not have had. Verse 17, And it came to pass after three days that Paul called the leaders of the Jews together, so when they had come together, he said to them, Men and brethren, though I've done nothing against our people or the customs of our father, fathers, yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, found uh, wanting to let me go because there was no cause for putting me to death. But when the Jews spoke against it, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, not that I had anything of which to accuse my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have called for you to see you and speak to you because for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. Uh, then they said to him, We neither received letters from Judea concerning you, nor have any of the brethren who came reported or spoken any evil of you. But we desire to hear from you what you think. Uh, for concerning this sect, we know that it is spoken against everywhere. Let me just stop there, and then we'll keep on and, and fact conclude, as my intention is in this episode, to conclude the book of Acts. Uh, notice how they're, and I'm going to start at the end, notice how they refer to Christianity as a sect, a section, a, a denomination, a portion, a, a religious group, but not the entire uh, T of a religion. In this case, sectarian or sect of the Nazarenes, it might have been called, uh, Jesus being from Nazareth. And uh, that's the way a lot of Jewish people viewed it. Uh, there were Sadducees, Pharisees, and maybe the sect of the Nazarenes, and so forth. And also look at the reputation. Uh, we just know everybody speaks bad about it everywhere we go. But at least they were open to giving him a hearing. And uh, it was, uh, he was glad to have the hearing. And he wanted to at least have an opportunity to tell them, I'm not here because I'm anti-Semitic, I'm anti-Jewish, I'm anti-Hebrew or Israel. I'm here because I, uh, the Romans, uh, the J people in Jerusalem, uh, you know, uh, uh, didn't want to have the freedom that was going to probably, it, he seems to think it was, going to be afforded him. Um, so, uh, you know, I had to appeal to Caesar basically to avoid being given back into the hands of the Jews. He didn't say it, but we know that there was even an assassination plot underway. And I'm here because... <clears throat> if you want to boil it all down, I'm here because of the hope of Israel, which is the Messiah, the Christ, of course. And, uh, okay, verse 23. So when they had appointed him a day, many came to him at, at his lodging, to whom he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets from morning till evening. So I had a good long session, and maybe more than one. 24, and some were persuaded. Wow, that's great. Some were persuaded by the things which were spoken. Some disbelieved. So when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul had said one word. 
The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our fathers, saying, Go to this people and say, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they've closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. Therefore let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear him. Let me just go ahead and conclude. There's only three more verses. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had a great dispute among themselves. Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. Now that, in a way, that sounds like a very uh, positive, and I'm going to go ahead and say it sound. It's good. It's uh, He had... Uh, how long? Two years, was it? Uh, yeah, two whole years there, and people were coming and going, nobody preventing him having talks with people that would come visit him. He was with a soldier, uh, may have even been chained to him, but for sure he's not able to leave and go elsewhere, but they could come to him, and uh, um, so it's a good way to end. Now, it is an odd way to end, too. You wonder, well, what happened when he went... When he got to Caesar, what happened? We, we don't know. Uh, it's a, it, One of the interesting things about Scripture is what sometimes is not, le- uh, I won't call it left hanging, but it's left in an odd way without all that you might want to know being given. What's God's intention that you know you know, but not everything you might want to know <laughs> is provided. And some have said that he eventually went to Caesar and was released. Uh, and then he was rearrested at a future time. Others may su- may surmise or guess or think that he eventually did appear before Caesar and he was put to death. The Bible doesn't provide that information. It may provide a few things that we can read between the lines about, but we're not told definitively what happened to Paul. Okay, uh, one, one or two more things. Let me check my time here. Okay, just a couple minutes left, and that's going to work fine. Uh, one or two more things. Uh, it... it, it, it it was interesting that some were persuaded and some disbelieved. And when I say interesting, uh, it it never is going to be that everybody turns, but you may win some. And uh, he was able to persuade and win some. Uh, he's concerned, though, that a lot of them are not, and he even uh, puts a quote from Isaiah on them that people can just be so hard of hearing, which is how we sometimes say it, uh, dull of heart and hard of hearing and close their eyes to reality. And uh, this is going to happen. It's been spoken of by Isaiah hundreds of years before this. Don't let it happen again, as I'm sure what he's hoping would be the case. Um, but, and as a, and one more thing, verse 28, uh, I just want you to know, though, salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. Uh, I, I don't think he's trying to stir up people. Maybe he is, but uh, in case it's even wondered, why are you going to Gentiles? It was God's will, of course, and that uh, they will turn generally. That's not, of course, without exception, but as a general rule, Jews would reject. As a general rule, non-Jews would receive uh, the, the word of uh, salvation in Jesus Christ. All right. Thank you again. I want to say that as I actually do uh, wrap this up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.